on Moonlight, which is a movie that was done a couple of years ago in 2016. Now, many people know this movie because of what happened at the Academy Awards. Um, now, the basic story was that Moonlight had been fighting um, with um, La La Land throughout the awards season. And then at the actual Academy Awards, they made a mistake. Um, there was a mix up with the envelopes. And what happened was the presenters um, said that La La Land had won, but then once they opened the envelope and they figured out what was going on, they figured out that Moonlight was actually the winner. So it's most well known for that, but it's actually a remarkable movie that thinks not just about racism, but about how um, sexuality and homosexuality and toxic masculinity um, connects to racism and the understanding of race more generally. In this video, I'm going to split things up in a couple of sections. I'm going to first talk, give everyone a very quick summary of the movie. That is just so that everyone is on the same page. Um, and, you know, and if anyone needs a reminder of the film, it's a very quick way of doing it. And then after that, I'm going to switch over to um, analysis. And I'm going to have a couple of short sections where I take a particular angle for that movie. So after this, I'm going to go into summary, and then I'll do the more interesting part and talk about um, how we can analyze the film. First, I'm going to do the very quick, very boring summary of the film. The Moonlight is split up in three separate sections. Section number one is titled Little. There are a couple of events that happen in this section that I think are worth kind of holding on to. Um, the first is that we are obviously introduced to Sharon, who is our main character. And he um, comes into contact with Juan, who is a drug dealer. Um, and we have very, a couple of very quick scenes early on in the movie showing us um, how Juan operates and what his business is like. So we have Juan finding Sharon after Sharon has been hiding from other kids. So we actually have the idea of bullying and chasing early on in the movie. Now, Juan also has a partner. Um, me, named Teresa. Now, Teresa is going to become this um, mother figure for Sharon. So, in part one, we watch Sharon um, create a relationship between himself and um, Teresa and Juan. So, that's really the main, um, the main thing that happens in the first section. Now, we also have this representation of Sharon's own home life. Um, Sharon's mother, Paula, has been suffering from um, an addiction, and we get very um, powerful representations of how this has been affecting Sharon. And Sharon has learned over time, even in that first section, that he no longer loves his, his mother. All right, that's one of the big um, realizations that he's going through at this moment in his life. Then, part number two is titled Sharon. All right, so another name, uh, another way of understanding the main character's identity. Now, in this section, the bullying gets worse and worse. We have a very, very strong series of representations of how Sharon is being bullied at school. Now, the main um, person who's been doing this is Terrell. All right, so one of the main events that happens in the second section of the movie is Terrell introduces um, a game that they had in middle school. And he does this by talking um, to Kevin, who is Sharon's closest friend. And the game is called um, Knock Down, Stay Down. All right, and the basic idea is that um, Terrell will choose another student and tell Kevin to beat them up. And the goal is to beat them up until they can no longer get up. Terrell uses this game in order to really um, get Kevin to beat up Sharon, our main character. And then at the end of the section, Sharon goes into the school and hits Terrell um, on the back or by his head with um, a chair. 
All right, and then that's the end of the section. The third section is called Black. This is where we get the representation of Sharon as an adult. Now, some of us may find this surprising, some may not. Uh, now, Sharon, at this point, is a drug dealer. All right, he has a business, and we have a few uh, moments when we get to see how he interacts with others in his business. There's that scene early on where um, Sharon messes with one of his employees um, by saying that the count is off. And then he says, oh, I was just messing with you. I was just um, seeing how you would react. So we have um, this representation of Sharon. Now, the, one of the main things that happens in this section is um, Sharon hears from his mother and from Kevin. He gets phone calls from each of them. And he meets with his mother, who is now in rehab, who is moving forward and who has a job. And then Sharon, in the last 20 minutes of the film or so, goes to Kevin's restaurant and talks to him. One of the main things that happens at the film, at the end of the film, is Kevin and Sharon um, embrace and they have a conversation about where things have gone. And then at the very end of the movie, we have a flashback through Sharon's own mind um, to him standing on the beach at Moonlight. All right, that is my very quick summary of the movie, just so we're all on the same page. There are some things I left out. I just picked out, um, you know, the bare bones, the things that seem most important to me. Now I'm going to move in the next section to analyzing things. It is absolutely possible, and this is an argument that can be made, that Moonlight has a specific model for understanding personal history. This might be one of the reasons why Moonlight has that three-part structure, why we have Little, then Sharon, then Black. Because what that allows the filmmakers to do is that it gives them a way to think through repetition right? History is about repetition, right? We know that from history classes, right? History repeating itself in slightly different forms as we go along. Now, Moonlight, we can say, wants us to think through how that could work for an individual. What if we have three scenes in a person's life and we get to connect them to each other? We get to see how Sharon is progressing and moving forward, or maybe not moving forward. All right, so one thing that we can say is that Moonlight takes the model for understanding natural or national or international histories, and it uses them, it adapts them to thinking about the individual, that we can actually, um, with the structure of the film, look at how the different moments in Sharon's life connect to each other. And one of the main ways that the movie does this is by um, giving a representation of Sharon later on that is very similar to the representation of Juan. Is, that is Mahershala's, Mahershala Ali's character in the first section of the film. We, the movie gives us a way to connect them to each other. And we can actually think about whether Sharon, at the end of the movie, leaves the drug industry. He leaves the drug business. We actually don't know. The movie doesn't give us the answer to that question, and I think that is on purpose. Because if we take the search for a personal history seriously, um, then it's all about getting invested in those moments, right? And not filling in the gaps between everything, letting them stand on their own. In this section of the video, I'm going to think about the angle of identity and how identity is represented in the movie. So I'm going to take a very, very quick detour and I'm going to bring everything back. All right, the detour is going to be thinking about philosophy. If you look around and you read many other authors who are interested in different aspects of our identity, you will find really interesting um, analyses. So if you read um, Frank Spanon or James Baldwin, you come away with the idea that race 
is essential to how we understand ourselves. And it doesn't matter what race you are a part of. It is an integral part of your own identity. Now, if you read around about gender and sexuality, so if you look at um, Judith Butler or various other scholars, you'll come away with this idea that sexuality and gender are some of the main ways that we understand ourselves. Now, you can read around about identity as much as possible, and those um, writers will often focus on a single aspect of our identity. However, if we look at all of those and we really think about them, it's all connected, right? There are, um, so if we really want to understand race, right? It allow we should be looking at, at how everything is connected. That when we look at a single individual, it's not like they only understand themselves through their own race or through their own sexuality or through their own um, whatever, right? They understand themselves as a linking of all these different modes of identity, right? I understand myself through my gender, through my sexuality, through um, my race, right? All these different parts of my identity are just brought together and they actually might not be unlinkable. Now, Moonlight, and this is one argument, takes that seriously. One of the questions behind Moonlight is what happens when you deprive an individual of an incredibly important part of their identity. Now, one of the main representations of that question is in the last section of the film, the conversation between Kevin, uh, so this is Sharon's closest friend, and Sharon. We learn that Sharon has not had an intimate moment since the one he had in section two with Kevin. He actually says that he has not touched anyone and no one has touched him since that moment. That is incredibly important because one of the things that the film does is it tries to figure out what happens to an individual when you take away something like their sexuality, right? Which takes everything along with it. If we understand individuals as different parts of our identity, race, gender, sexuality, etc. And they're all linked together and they cannot be brought apart. If you try to take something away from that individual, it can bring other things along with it, right? That is the negative side or the really complicated side of the model of identity in Moonlight. Now, it gets even more complicated because not only is Sharon deprived of something by what Kevin does in the second part of the film, but he has to watch um, and come to terms with the fact that Kevin has moved on. Now, one of the things that we learn in that third part is that Kevin has a child, Kevin Jr., with Samantha. All right, that is an incredibly important detail to work into the film because Sharon has to look at not just what's been taken away from him by Kevin, but what Kevin was able to achieve. All right, so it kind of has that double-sided effect to it. Now, the other thing, the other concept that is related to all of this is the idea of building one's identity. It is brought up about 19, into the, 19 minutes into the movie by Juan. Juan actually says when talking to Sharon after um, swimming that at some point, and this is the quote, at some point, you've got to decide yourself, who are you going to be? Can't let no one make that decision for you. The concept of building our own identity is worked throughout the entire film. In the third section, Sharon will say to Kevin, after I got out of prison, after I got out of juvenile detention and moved to Atlanta, I needed to build myself and he says, I chose to build myself hard, right? I chose to find a way to create a barrier between me and other individuals. Now, that is an incredibly complicated process, especially because, as I mentioned in the first um, couple minutes of this section, identity in this film is incredibly complicated. And it takes different aspects, different categories of ourselves and links them all together. All right, that's all I wanted to say in this section.
And now I'm going to go on from here. Yet another angle that we can take in thinking about Moonlight is uh, it has to do with the conflict between Kevin and Sharon. And I don't mean conflict in just like a battling sort of way. I mean conflict as having two individuals with two different worldviews and two different ways of understanding how they can use their identity. Even early on in the film, and we get this in section one of Moonlight, we have a conversation between Kevin and Sharon that is incredibly important. After playing soccer, Kevin approaches Sharon, and he says that you cannot be taken as soft. Now, Sharon has a response to him. He says to him, I'm not soft, right? And then Kevin says, it doesn't matter if people think you are soft. That is an incredibly important conflict because even in that first section, we have an understanding of Kevin as someone who understands that representation or um, perception is incredibly important. Whereas for Sharon, especially in section one and section two, is holding on to his identity and holding on to truth in a relatively objective fashion. I think that that is an incredibly important conflict especially for this movie, and it plays out in basically each and every section. And we can take, even by the time we get to the very end of the film, we can take this conflict as um, about reality versus perception. All right, and we have it worked out, not just in Kevin and Sharon, because that's certainly one angle, but we also have it working itself out with Juan, right, who um, we have stereotypes that other individuals are using to understand him and understand his relationship with Teresa and everything else. That is the end of my analysis for right now. Hopefully you found it helpful um, in some way. And again, with the summary and certainly with the analysis, I left a lot out. With the analysis, I focused on what was important to me. There are, as with any um, movie, um, dozens of different ways to understand this film. That's one of the reasons that it sticks with us um, beyond the watching of it and why we can re-watch it again and again and again. I only gave everyone a couple of angles and certainly you can come up with others, but hopefully the video was helpful in some way, even if just to get the conversation